The hard drive is where all information is stored on the computer, be it the Windows operating system, programs you install, or files you download and create on your computer, everything is stored on the hard drive. When selecting a hard drive to install into your computer, there are two basic features you need to consider. They are the capacity and the speed of the drive. Capacity is how much data a hard drive can store. Capacity is measured in gigabytes and terabytes. One gigabyte is made up of 1,000 megabytes. One terabyte is made up of 1,000 gigabytes. To give you an example of how much you can fit on one gigabyte of hard drive space, take an MP3 audio file. The average MP3 audio file takes up 5 megabytes. Divide 1,000 by 5 and you get 200. So one gigabyte of hard drive space can store 200 MP3 music files. The capacity of the drive you choose is up to you. Generally, you should buy the highest capacity drive you can afford. We recommend at least a 1 terabyte drive. The speed of the hard drive is determined by the revolution speed of the disk inside the hard drive and the amount of memory cache included in the drive. The revolution speed is measured in RPMs or revolutions per minute. Most hard drives spin at 7200 revolutions per minute. Faster hard drives spin at 10,000 or 15,000 RPMs. The RPM is important because the faster the drive revolves, the more quickly data can be written to and read from the hard drive. 10,000 and 15,000 RPM drives are rare and the capacities are limited. We recommend buying a 7200 RPM drive. The memory cache helps to speed up the accessing of the information on the drive, and the more of it the better. Drives can have 64 megabytes or more of cache. When purchasing a hard drive, a minimum of 32 megabytes of cache is recommended. Solid state drives, or SSDs, have no spinning disk to store data on. All information is kept on flash memory chips and can be written to and read back much quicker than from a disk-based drive. Compared to disk-based drives, SSDs have lower capacities of between 8 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes. The cost per gigabyte is also much higher with SSDs. Larger solid-state drives are coming and you can expect the cost per gigabyte to drop but disk-based drives will continue to be the most popular due to their far greater storage capacity. The hard drive connects to the computer through the hard drive controller on the motherboard. The most common type of hard drive controller is called Serial ATA or SATA, sometimes pronounced SATA or SATA. An SATA controller speed is measured in megabytes or MB per second. The original form of SATA had a speed of 150 megabytes per second. SATA2 controllers, which are found on all motherboards today, have a speed of 300 megabytes per second. SATA2 also introduced a few new features. The most important is called Native Command Queuing, or NCQ, which speeds up the access of data a little bit more. SATA3 controllers are beginning to appear on motherboards. SATA3 has a maximum speed of 600 megabytes per second. SATA3 is backwards compatible with SATA1 and 2. To get the maximum speed of SATA3, both the motherboard and the hard drive itself have to support SATA3. An older hard drive controller type, IDE, sometimes called ATA, with speeds that topped out at 133 megabytes per second, is being phased out and will become less available on future motherboards. We recommend buying a SATA2 or SATA3 hard drive for your new computer. Check the specifications on the motherboard before purchasing for SATA2 or SATA3 support. There's also a feature on most motherboards called RAID. RAID allows you to connect two or more hard drives together so they show up as one drive in Windows. There are three kinds of RAID arrays, RAID 0, 1, and 5. RAID 0, sometimes called striping, spreads the data across two or more hard drives. This gives you around a 15% increase in performance. The downside to RAID 0 is that if just one of the drives in the RAID 0 array fails, you will lose all of your data. Even on the hard drives that are still working, 
because a portion of your data was on the drive that is now dead. If you use RAID 0, make sure you have your important data backed up off of the RAID 0 array. RAID 1, sometimes referred to as mirroring, uses two hard drives and keeps the same data on both drives. This gives you a built-in backup at all times and gives you a 15% to 50% performance increase in reading data from the drives. The downside to this is that you're using two hard drives and only getting the space of one. So if you have two 750 gigabyte drives, you're only getting 750 gigabytes of hard drive space. RAID 5 combines the striping of data in RAID 0 with the built-in backup of RAID 1. Three or more hard drives in a RAID 5 array keeps the usable data on two-thirds of the drive's combined space, with one-third of the drive space used as the redundant or parity data. If one of the hard drives dies, it can be replaced with a new drive, and the remaining data on the other two drives is used to recreate the missing data and get the RAID 5 array back to a fully working state with no data loss. The performance increase over single drives is between 15 and 25 percent. There are also hard drives that connect from the outside of the computer, called external hard drives. They have their own power supply, separate from the computer, and connect through either FireWire, external SATA, or USB 2.0 external interfaces, which is useful if you need to take large amounts of data with you on the go. So when you go to purchase your hard drive or drives, you're looking for at least a 1 terabyte drive capacity, a 7200 RPM speed with at least 32 megabytes of cache, serial ATA2 or serial ATA3 support, and if you want to try RAID, look for your type of RAID support, 0, 1, or 5 on the motherboard. In the installation lessons, we'll go over how to install the hard drive or drives into the case.